Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Emma. In this video, I will tell you how you can create a good collection of malware samples. A collection of malware samples is formally referred to as a malware dataset. Having your own dataset comes in handy when you are studying about malware reverse engineering. You can learn about how a piece of code was designed to be malicious. It is also useful when you are learning about threat hunting. You can create hunts to look for known malware signatures in your dataset. Identifying repeated malware signatures in your dataset can help you build intelligence about a specific cyber adversary. Now I will tell you how you can create a malware dataset in your home lab. There are two steps in this task. The first step is to acquire malware samples from approved sources. Some examples are the Zoo, Inquest, Virus Share, Virus Bay, VX Underground, and Malware Bazaar. The next step is to securely store those samples on your computer. Ensure that you do not execute the samples on your host computer and utilize them only in a sandboxed environment. Now, I will show you a quick demo of how you can acquire and securely store a live malware sample. I will pick a malware sample from the Inquest GitHub repository. I will go ahead and download it. Typically, your antivirus software may prevent you from downloading malware samples. Windows Defender is the default antivirus software on Windows computers, which has raised this warning. In that case, you can first create a special folder for the malware dataset. Then exclude that folder from antivirus scanning. Then, you can download your samples directly to that folder. You can even temporarily modify your web browser setting to prompt you about the location of files to be downloaded. Now when I download the malware sample, there is no warning prompt from Windows Defender. You may need to allow your browser to download the sample. You can download this entire repository onto your computer to build your malware dataset. Let's add another sample from Malware Bazaar to our dataset. I have picked this sample. The file name of the sample is its SHA-256 hash value. Let's download it. It appears that the malware sample is in a zipped file. You can set up tools like 7-Zip to work with zipped files. Most malware samples that you can find from approved sources on the internet will be distributed in a password-protected zip file. The password commonly used to secure malware samples is infected unless otherwise stated by the uploader. There we have the extracted sample. When you build your dataset, ensure that all the malware samples have been extracted from the zipped files. Let's talk about what makes a good malware dataset. It is recommended for your dataset to be at least 5 GB in size, at a minimum. What's even more important is the quality of the samples in the dataset. We utilize files with various extensions every day. All of these file formats have been used by cyber adversaries to spread malware. A good malware dataset must have a variety of samples across multiple file formats. Most of the repositories that I have mentioned already host a diverse set of samples. Now that your malware dataset is ready, how can you go about picking samples for your experiments? You may have noticed that the file names of most samples is the hash value of the file. Let's say you want to pick all documents with the RTF extension from your malware dataset. You can write a Yara rule that utilizes the file magic number to identify files of a specific type. Do you want to know all about Yara rules? 
I invite you to read this article in our library. You will find the link to it in the description box below. Are you also wondering about what magic numbers are? We have another video on our channel to tell you all about it. You will also find the link to it in the description box below. Here, I have written a Yara rule that can identify only RTF files from a dataset using its magic number. This is the magic number of RTF files. When this rule is executed against my malware dataset that has malicious executables, DLLs, disk image files, etc., only the malicious RTF documents have been identified. However, we can see a file here with the JPEG extension. Let's open this file in a hexadecimal editor application. We can see that the magic number for RTF exists here, but the extension has been renamed to JPEG. This is a tactic utilized by cyber adversaries to trap people into opening malicious files. I hope you have a good idea now about how a good malware dataset can be created. I invite you to set up your own malware analysis lab, your own malware dataset, and practice analyzing malware. I would recommend starting out with analyzing advanced, persistent threat samples. They are a great choice for beginners studying about malware. VX Underground has some great APT samples. We also have a number of videos on our channel to help you get started. You can find the links in the description box below. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!